So hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. I've had my Oculus Quest for a couple of months now, although it seems much, much longer, strangely. It was formally released on October 13th, 2020. I did my initial review, but I'd like to come back to it and do another review, because as you play with something for a while, more and more things become apparent. You start developing actual concrete opinions on things. So I want to share them with you. The headset isn't as shiny as we first thought. It is full of compromises. And I don't think they should have called it the Oculus Quest 2, because that kind of implies that this is a next generation headset, but they did. But don't get me wrong, I do love the Oculus Quest. I really do think it's a great headset, but I've got a lot to say. So let's go over the good, the bad, and the ugly after playing with this device for a couple months now. So the Oculus Quest 2's entry level is the 64 gigabyte model, 64 gigs of storage, that's only going to cost you $299 or pounds. Then we have the 256 gigabyte model, which is the next tier up for a hundred more. So that's 399, but you do get an additional 196 gigabytes of storage, which with the recent announcement of the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners being a 12 gigabyte install, and with hopes that we're going to continue getting games like that in the future, it may be wise to think about the 256 gigabyte model, although, I have a free game library and I still haven't filled up my device. And the games don't take very long to download either because they tend to be so small. But if you want to future proof your headset and play it safe, perhaps, perhaps that's wise. So for those of you perhaps thinking about getting a Quest or you might be getting one for the Christmas from good old Saint Nick, the Oculus Quest is a standalone virtual reality headset from Oculus, which is a Facebook owned company, which now I think it's kind of safe to say that Oculus is Facebook. It's not company owned by anyone. Facebook and Oculus, they're kind of the same thing now. So they have a virtual reality headset that does not require a gaming PC, so I guess it can be coined a virtual reality console. On release, these price points and storage sizes were a surprise to me because the Quest 1, the original Quest, was 399 for 64 gigabytes, and it had worse specs, and this was available just a month or two prior to the Quest 2's release. It left many people salty, but it's not all bad because that headset has some benefits over the Quest 2, which I am going to touch on. So this Quest 2 headset is made of a hard ivory colored plastic, it's not pure white, and the headset hasn't gotten very dirty. Although I did do a deep clean video recently and there were lots of kind of little pieces of dirt, but nothing substantial on the headset. So if you're interested in knowing how to take care of your headset, I do have a video on that. So I'm a careless gamer, I do just throw my remotes around, throw my headset down every time I play virtual reality, but it's managed to stay clean. It doesn't have any permanent stains, it doesn't have any damage from wear and tear. So from that standpoint, I am pretty impressed. That's something you want from a VR headset for sure. But something that's not so great is the fabric on the headset from the strap. I have got dirt on that that I've been unable to clean. Yeah, that's kind of getting an off color now. It's getting kind of dirty. The headset itself, the hard plastic, great to clean. The strap, the fabric, not so much. And speaking of the head strap, the new head strap does have a slightly elasticated fabric. So if you've used the Oculus Go before, this will look familiar to you. So the Quest 1 had a rubber harder head strap that kind of grabbed the back of your head. This sort of wraps around it. So at first glance, you'd think that this is a downgrade of a head strap, which of course it is. But some changes to the Quest 2 have actually made the headset more comfortable. So the harder head strap on the Quest 1 is not required. This will differ from person to person, but from my personal experience, I can definitively say I prefer the Quest 2's comfort. I have longer play times and it doesn't feel like my face has been beaten up after I've been playing. So the Quest 2 is 503 grams and it's much smaller. The Quest 1 is 571 grams and it's larger. And this size makes a big difference because as you move further and further away from a pivotal point, the force felt when you apply some force to the end feels greater, like how a crowbar works, bolt cutters, or putting a weight in your arm, holding it here is fine, but then you extend, it's a lot harder. There is a mathematical term for that. I don't know it. Comment down below if you do. But with the new head strap, you may be like me and it just doesn't fit your head properly. I have to tuck my ears under, which is fine, just just if I don't, it's going to rub on the top of my ears and hurt. And tightening this head strap has to be the worst design for a head strap ever. It's like tightening a strap for a backpack. It's just hard to get it perfectly right. It's too tight, it's too loose. It's really not an exemplar way to do things, perhaps an exemplar way on how not to do things. So the Quest 2 is much more comfortable. I don't walk away with a beaten face anymore. It has a nicer foam insert, which feels like a much 
denser foam. It's a bit like a mattress topper than the previous model, but it can get hot, especially in your fitness VR games. So a lighter headset, a cheaper strap to make the overall price point cheaper kind of works for me. So the audio on this headset has also changed. I don't know if it's an acoustics thing because the material is slightly different on the headset. The slit is different. It's now horizontal instead of vertical. So it could be more direct playing the audio into our ears, but it sounds better. The bass just seems better. On my Quest 1, my audio would sometimes clip when I was playing Beat Saber full blast and it was nasty but that could have just been my headset. But now with the Quest 2, it seems to have a much lower end. The highs are less tinny, which is something that drives me crazy. So I really do appreciate the improvement here. Of course, audio on the headset isn't fantastic and incredible, and you can improve it with the use of some accessories. But if you don't want to, the audio is pretty good. So now one of the biggest issues that I have with the Quest 2 that for many people is a deal breaker, and I understand, it's an LCD screen over the OLED that was in the Q1. So the blacks on the Quest 1 were so black, it looked fantastic, really, really great colors on the Quest 1 screen. But now on the Quest 2, those blacks, they're like gray. So playing games like Vader Immortal or horror games, you're just engulfed in a hazy gray when you should be walking around in darkness and it can be immersion breaking. It's very, very annoying because once you notice it, you kind of can't stop noticing it. But in games, I think the color, when there's color present, it's actually pretty good. I was expecting a more drastic color difference when I was going from OLED to LCD, which I do think is noticeable when I'm playing Beat Saber. The blues are much brighter on the Quest 1, but the colors I think are pretty great on this LCD screen still. But there is a benefit to this new screen. You have the ability now to play in 90 Hertz. Now the Oculus Link beta is released. You can also play 90 Hertz for PC VR as well, which I will touch on since this headset is now Oculus's PC VR and standalone device. I have to touch on it. So the Quest 1 was 72 Hertz, meaning it will refresh the image 72 times per second. The Quest 2 has a 25% improvement and is now running at 90 Hertz. So that's 90 refreshes every second. So this should be much smoother gameplay, which could help people with motion sickness. Even though it's very, very minor, it may help some of you smooth the gameplay. It feels great. It's good to see that this headset finally having that baseline of 90 hertz which seems to be kind of the standard it's what the vibe's running at it's what the g2's running at and it's more than the rift s was which was running at 80 hertz this new screen also has a 150 percent more pixel density which seriously has got to be the biggest improvement on this headset it has the biggest impact by far at least for myself so the resolution is 1832 by 1920 per eye versus the previous 1440 by 1600 per eye so games look so crisp and it really deepens the immersion giving older games new life and it makes me want to dive in and play them again some of the classics that i loved i am so happy with this update the quality of wearing this headset is seriously fantastic have to hold my hands up there it's great so what's making these improvements possible? That higher resolution, those higher refresh rates, because these improvements, they need more power. So there has been a hardware upgrade as well in this headset, which I'm very, very happy to see. They are using the XR2 chip designed specifically by Qualcomm for AR and virtual reality use. So the previous chip was an 835 Snapdragon, something I had in my Samsung S8, I believe, back in the day, an old phone. So this XR2 chip offers twice the performance, which I think will mean we will see some Quest 2 exclusives content very soon. Perhaps like Medal of Honor, I will not be surprised to see that being an exclusive. So this chip, it can run 15 trillion floating point operations as the Quest 1 was only 1.3. So there's a lot more power available to developers who are already finding it hard to optimize games for the Quest 1 anyway, but some people are doing a fantastic job. And I don't know to what extent, because it's still mobile hardware, this is going to address many concerns people have around VR taking a step back with the Quest. Because as it becomes very, very popular, I suppose there's less feasibility from a business perspective to create these stunning, hardware expensive PC VR titles when people are just going to be playing it on a quest. But it's early days. I think we will see exclusive content soon uh, and that will give us a better idea of how good these games are actually going to look on the quest because we keep getting these kind of animated styles, nothing that's kind of jaw droppingly stunning, but there are a few games that are an exception to this rule. So those compromises I was talking about now, something else they've done to cut costs is remove that manual IPD mechanic where you were previously able to get your IPD of your inter-pupil distance of your eyes 
perfect. So you'd have the best possible view through those lenses for your virtual reality experience. Instead, they've gone in favor of a three tier system where each tier will support an IPD range. So the Quest 2 has three of them and the lowest is 58 mil, then it's 63 and then it's 68. And myself, I'm 60, so it's nice to be bang in the middle of one of these damn tiers. But what people have been doing is moving the lenses just ever so slightly in between two of the tiers and then that can give you a better view through those lenses. Although if you then nudge your headset, it pops back into place for one of the others. This is a noticeable difference from when I first got my headset. I'll put it on and my eyes kind of have to adjust to this IPD that previously was exact on my Quest 1, but now on the Quest 2, I've got to have that disparity. And I notice that every time I put on my headset, I have a brief second of, ugh. <laughs> But after a while then when I'm playing a game, it's not something that I notice or focus on, but I don't know really what the long-term effects of that may be because it is warping my vision when I put it on initially. So it may be doing something to my eyes um, and it can be very, very annoying. So this is a step back. This is one of those things where I thought them calling it Quest 2 is not quite right. This is like a Quest S or a Quest Pro. It's not next gen. So there isn't a field of view improvement either for the Quest 1 and the Quest 2. They're both approximately 100 degrees. And to me, I still feel like the FOV is kind of blinkered. Although I've been told this may be because, because of my IPD isn't exact and I'm not looking through the lenses perfectly, that it kind of warps my view and I may be seeing the edges of the screen where if your IPD was more on the, on the tiers, the 58, 63 and 68, this wouldn't be the case. So if you're someone that's really concerned about this, because admittedly, it's not really bad. It's not terrible. It's just something that I've noticed. Perhaps ask someone who's got an IPD that's near yours and get their opinion before purchasing the headset, because that's probably going to be the best kind of review of the field of view that you are going to get by someone who has the same IPD as you. Heating is a concern for people as well. I know I got a lot of questions about that during my Q&As. So the Quest 1, the old headset, it used to get very, very hot after a play session in the middle of the headset. But the Quest 2, I've not really experienced that. No issues at all. I've been playing it for a while now and I've not ran into any overheating issues. You can't play and charge at the same time. And that may be why I'm not running into those problems because I can't play for longer than two hours without putting the headset down to charge. But heating, overheating, it's not gonna melt on your face. The battery lasts about the same on the Quest 1 as it did for the Quest 2. And um, when 90 Hertz was released though, I thought it was going to drain the battery much faster, but I've not really noticed a large enough difference for it to stand out to me. So the battery when playing games lasts around two hours still, depending on what I'm playing, and even longer if I'm using it just to watch media or surf the internet. But then when it dies to charge it again, I do have to set it aside and wait for like an hour approximately before there's enough battery really for me to dive in and play a good enough session before it dies again. You may have noticed with phones and laptops that after a while, you'll charge it fully and it drains super fast. And that's because the, the battery's been absolutely destroyed. And I think they're trying to avoid that with this Quest. So a slow charge, low ampage, should hopefully improve the longevity of the battery. And so we're not going to have moments where we put on our Quest to play and it only lasts around 30 minutes. I'd rather increase the longevity of the headset than charge faster. Okay, a huge improvement on this device amazing is the controllers. They've worked some kind of miracle on these remotes. I've had this for a couple of months now and the batteries that I got at launch with the Quest, the Mutsubushi batteries, only just died. And I put my Quest on pretty much every single day. This is just an insane improvement on a device that isn't rechargeable. It's, I know other YouTubers such as Nathy have tweeted out about how great the battery lasts on these controllers. It, they are fantastic. The remotes have also got a new design, which is like a mix between the original controllers and the Quest Touch controllers. They have an extended handle now, an extended grip of the remote. It's slightly bigger. And the remote's triggers are also larger too. And they have a softer touch, so when you squeeze them and pull the trigger, it feels like a less hollow plastic hitting on plastic, and it just feels much softer. The surface area of the buttons area as well, and the analog stick is larger, so you have an area now to rest your thumb during gameplay sessions for games like Beat Saber, where it doesn't require me to press any of the buttons. They also have more weight to them, so be sure to actually use the straps. You don't want to be launching them at stuff and breaking anything. But the remotes, I am a fan. Definitely a fan.
Tracking seems to be much, much better as well on this new headset. I don't know why or how, it just seems the overall experience doesn't seem to be suffering from, let's call it the Quest 1-ism. Moments where the Quest goes, I don't know what I'm doing, which if you've got a Quest 1, you'll know. You'll put on your headset, things will just go crazy for a minute and then black out. I don't seem to be having any of those problems with this new headset. It's a lot more reliable from a UX perspective, which on a device that is all about user-friendly experiences is perfect. So if you are a general consumer, if you're someone that's not really dove into virtual reality before, or perhaps even gaming, the Quest is going to be perfect for you with really simple interfaces, educational material for you to get up and running. It's just fantastic for newcomers, it really is. And if you're not in the virtual reality community a lot, and you're not aware of all the Quest games that are available, the Quest has a few hundred games now at its disposable, and a lot of them, they are kind of very simple VR games. They're not AAA titles, although there are some fantastic, incredible games such as Lies Beneath, just superb, The Walking Dead, maybe one of the most well-rounded VR games I've ever played. But if you're looking for the best virtual reality experience possible, then the Quest alone is not going to fulfill that. If you would just want a fantastic, easy to use VR experience with some great games and to let you know what's out there, the Quest is great for that. But for an experience like Half-Life Alex, Asgard's Wrath, you're going to need to get a gaming PC. So I see the Quest as like your first car. You can drive around in it, it's gonna get you to point A to point B but it's not a sports car. However, the Quest has a secret weapon for those of you that do have a gaming PC and wish to upgrade your virtual reality experiences, the Oculus Link or virtual desktop is at your disposal. And these options let you play PC VR games on your Oculus Quest via a USB-C connection, or if you're using virtual desktop, a wireless Wi-Fi connection. So the Oculus Link at Quest 2's launch was definitely inferior. It was blurry imagery, only 72 hertz refresh rate. It was very, very unreliable compared to other tethered options. But since then, there has been many, many improvements and we now have 90 hertz available for the Oculus Link and the ability to change the bit rate and scale the resolution. So you can now get the clearest imagery that it was previously lacking. The bit rate maxes out at 500 megabits, which is plenty of bits. And once you hit around 300 or 350, I couldn't really tell the difference. It was just looking like I was using like a Rift headset. The link is much, much better. And the fact that you can also use virtual desktop and enjoy these experience wirelessly with your Oculus Quest, I do find it very hard not to recommend this headset anymore because of its portability and its hybrid features. So with the Quest, you can also give yourself the option of potentially upgrading in the future, getting a gaming PC and satisfying your virtual reality craving that will come. It will come. So finally, a big, big topic about this headset, kind of like a T's and C's, is about its daddy. Facebook. So this device since October will be mandatory for you to sign in with a Facebook account, linking your Facebook account to your virtual reality device, which is supposed to bring features in the future, more and more social features, but I've not really seen anything substantial except things like chats and content sharing, which could have been done without the mandatory Facebook integration. But many users are being instantly banned as well when trying to sign up, which is the last thing you want when you've just got a new device. So you're also going to have to consider when looking for this device, do I want to link my Facebook account? And if you don't mind doing that, you need to make sure that your account is in perfect order so you don't get instantly banned when signing up. Because if you do have this problem, they do not have the nicest support network for you to get it sorted. If you have a Quest 1 already and you're thinking about upgrading but you don't want to do this, don't worry. You don't have to. You can keep your Quest 1 for another few years before it's mandatory. So overall, the headset, I really do love it. Never has virtual reality been easier and cheaper to get a great device for only $2.99, but because of that cheap price point, corners had to be cut to meet it. So we've seen some step backs with the Quest 2, which can be a deal breaker for, for many of you, such as the strap, which really to me isn't an issue. It seems to be more comfortable than the previous model. The IPD mechanism no longer being manual, that's a real, real problem. And the LCD screen doesn't have true blacks and it can ruin dark experiences like Vader Immortal. And there's a mandatory Facebook sign up. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows. But there are many great improvements, such as it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more comfortable, it supports 90 hertz for smoother virtual reality experiences, a much higher resolution, which really is brilliant, super, super clear. It has a controller redesign, which is much, much better. It also contains an XR2 chip, so there's more performance under that hood waiting to be used. 
A couple of months later, I still love the Oculus Quest, but I have that feeling of what's still to come. This could have been better, but they made some horrible decisions. What is it bringing new to the table? And I think it's not really bringing anything new, which is why I think it's a Quest S instead of a Quest 2, because it brings improvements, but it doesn't bring next gen features. But saying that, I do think the upgrade is worth it. That refresh rate and that resolution and future proofing your game library is definitely worth that extra payout. I am speaking personally, and especially I do think exclusive games are coming out soon, and they're gonna be games that we want to play. And because of the sheer number of units sold of the Quest 2, I just don't see Quest 1 support going on for much longer, unfortunately. But I hope I'm wrong, I really, really do. So that's my thoughts and how I feel since the Quest 2's launch with this device. I love it, but there is good, there is bad, there is ugly. For a more in-depth review about the Quest 2 though, please check out my original review video. I go more into a deep dive on the specs of this device and it's a vi this this is a video more about my opinions after playing it for a couple of months. So for more Quest content, please subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Thanks to my patrons, you absolute legends. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.